Hi everybody, this is Neil Bradshaw from UberPi and um, I'm going to show you how to get around in RetroPie today. I'm going to use this kind of controller. It's a uh, PS3 style uh, USB 2.4 GHz wireless controller. I'll also go over controller configurations um, the best I can. Um, so if you have to configure a controller once you're already in RetroPie, like a second player controller or reconfigure your other controller because you botched it up. I'll uh, do my best to show you how to do that. But basically, in a nutshell, you land on a screen that looks like this. You'll probably land right there. Um, it usually lands with the A for Atari, obviously. And from here, um, you got a couple options. Um, if you have the UberPi Mini, you'll have a port section that you can go into, and you'll have Kodi and the desktop. This is not the UberPi Mini version, but I'll show that. I show that in another video how to do that. Um, here in this RetroPi Mini, you've got all kinds of stuff. You got Raspy Config, Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, stuff like that. Um, on the UberPi system. You do not have to worry too much about Wi-Fi and RetroPie because it auto-feeds the, the settings from Berry Boot. And in the UberPie Mini, you do have to go to this Wi-Fi setting to uh, set up your network. Um, these are just a bunch of different uh, configuration options and stuff like that. You shouldn't have to mess with it too much. So... To get into that, I pressed the A button, and to get out of that, I pressed the B button. Now, if I press the A button and I want to go to the next one over, I can just push left or right and go to the next option over, which correlates to what is on this screen right here. Now, if you press your start button, you get options like scraper. Um, Scraper will automatically get video game data and put it into RetroPie. I don't like it very much because I found that it gets false data and it duplicates. So it looks like you got like three Sonic the Hedgehog 3s. And uh, so I quit using it. It looked neat, but I didn't like the functionality of it. So I just quit using it because I figured it's better off to have an accurate list than it is to have a fancy list. Uh, you got your sound settings, UI settings, other settings, configure input. We can go there real quick. Um, it'll ask you if you want to configure input. I'm just, I, I pushed A to get there. Push A again. It says two gamepads detected, so I'm going to hold the button on my device to configure it. So I'm just going to push and hold the button. And now I'm going to do exactly what it says on the screen. D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select. And then for A, B, X, Y, I always, always do A, B, X, Y. Regardless of what the, uh, the controller says, if it's got little shapes on it like the PlayStation 1, or they pre-label it for you, it's basically the Super Nintendo layout, and it's the one that I like the best. So I put those in. Um, you got your left shoulders and your right shoulders, which are on the top of the uh, controller. The shoulder is the small button closest to you. The trigger is the big button in the back. Left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger, right trigger. Left thumb is actually just pushing down on the, the analog joystick. And right thumb is the other analog joystick. So you got your left one over there and your right one over here, obviously. And then up down left right up down left right now if you botch a key if that you if that you're trying to configure like you push the wrong key or whatever you can go back up and if you push two buttons at the same time it'll let you it'll let you go ahead and it said already taken because I didn't come off the button fast enough but It'll uh, it'll let you go ahead and reconfigure whichever button you're trying to reconfigure. So for this one, once it gets out of its little uh, 
little conundrum here where it says already taken. If I quit pushing buttons, it'll do it. Um, there we go. I just had to push the button that I wanted that wasn't already taken. If you have buttons that are really screwed up and you have to reconfigure, you're best off um, trying to reconfigure this way. Or there's also resources available. Um, I'll make them available on my website to where you can actually use your computer to reset your controller configuration. And then you can go back in and just totally wipe out all your controllers and start over. And that's configuring the gamepad. It's not super exciting. It just is what it is. And if you have to, in the process of, of uh, configuring this, if you've got a joystick or say you've got something like this rad controller the uh, the old Sega Genesis six button controller, which I like a lot because it's got the buttons laid out three on three. Um, you're going to have some buttons that are obviously missing. If you use a PS3 style controller, every button that this RetroPie asks for is going to be on the controller. But on that controller, the other controller, the Sega Genesis one, it's not. So when you get to a spot where like you don't have left analogs and stuff like that, if you just push and hold two buttons at the same time, then um, it'll fly right through that button and go to the next one. And then you push and hold two buttons for the next one that you don't have. And that'll, uh, that'll get you where you need to be. So if you have a joystick that doesn't have all the buttons that this thing asks for, you're, you'll be fine. You just got to remember to push two buttons at the same time at the very beginning when it's first going through all the menus and it'll uh, just skip skip the button it'll skip that button configuration so I'm gonna get out of here sometimes okay takes a while that time it didn't but we're gonna go ahead and we'll play a video game um, we'll just go to Neo Geo so go to Neo Geo you uh, hit the A button and then you've got all these games. I don't know if you'll have them or not. It's kind of whatever. Let your conscience be your guide type thing. Um, so I'll just pick something like Fatal Fury 3. That's a pretty good game. So you can play the Neo Geo, which is a very hard console to get a hold of. Very hard to get a hold of cartridges. And so right there, that gray screen, don't press anything when that comes up. Because that's a configuration screen. And what it's going to do is it gives you the option to configure the emulator and the video uh, resolution and all that other stuff. And you don't want to do that. For the most part, everything's set up the way it should be. And you should have no reason whatsoever to even have to go into that. So I'm just going to pick a player. Well, I'm on I'm in the two player um I'm on the second player joystick. So I need to reach in and grab the one player joystick. That sometimes is another tricky issue that you have to deal with with RetroPie sometimes is that uh you don't know which controller is the first player controller and which one's the second player controller. But what I just did to get out of the game was I pressed the select and start buttons at the same time. And when you do that, it actually just completely exits you out of the game. And uh, you have to do that on the one player controller. And that's how you can really quickly figure out, besides the fact that whenever you go into some games like Street Fighter 2... If you have the second player controller, you're going to be in the second player spot, and there won't be any one player spot. Um, you can figure out real quick, if you if you can't hit select and start to get out, you're on your second player, or your third player, or your fourth player even controller. 
you're not on the first player controller. Only the first player controller can exit games by hitting select and start at the same time. But I'll go back in there one more time just to have a little demonstration. And that's normal on the Neo Geo when it loads the ROM. It flashes. I'm sorry. And if there's nothing I can do about it, if you have a seizure medication, you probably should take it. That was not a joke. So I'm on the one player controller now. And you can watch me get stomped here briefly. And it's working perfectly. Now to get out of this mess, like I said, all you got to do at any time during gameplay is hit select and start. Boom. You're out. And so that's really about it for RetroPie, about how to get around. Um, there's some other deep intricacies that you can get into this. You can press the F4 key to go into console mode if you have to. And um, I don't think you'll really need to do that, but if you do... Um, you can press F4, you go into console mode, you can type in commands like a Linux command, uh, a command line. It is a Linux command line, it's Raspbian basically. And then you just type the word exit to get out of that. But I'm not going to really mess with demonstrating that because that's something that I have to tinker with on my end and not so much you on your end just because I had to custom configure a lot of stuff to make things run the way they do. And so, that's pretty much it, honestly, uh, about getting around in RetroPie. So you hit your B button to go out, you hit your A button to go in, B button out, A button in, and then you can left, left and right it to go to different ones, hit, hit your B button again to go out, um, you hit your start button to choose some stuff in the main menu, and then... You hit B to get out of that, and then you have your RetroPie menu, which is super important, but you won't really mess with a whole lot. Maybe Bluetooth on the uh, UberPie Mini, the Wi-Fi, but you really won't have to mess with a whole lot of this. Um, so, that's it. Thanks for watching.